Today we're going to be looking at the Aquafadas plugin to InDesign, which allows you to create a rich media environment um, for use on um, iPads, tablets of any sort, and also e-readers and web readers. And the environment that it creates for you is straight into InDesign. And you see this area here is the plugin environment with AVE Project Manager and AVE Interactivity. And so you are working within your normal InDesign environment and you just have these extra windows to work with. Now, there's a number of things that you need to have available to you on your computer in order for this to work. One is of course InDesign with the plugin installed which is a download from the DreamTech website and you also need the iOS simulator if you are working on a Mac in order to allow you to test um, the apps and uh, articles that you create. Um, the iOS simulator allows you to download the My Kiosk application, which is effectively your own test bed. Now, also it's handy to have any other elements available to you that you'd like to use, such, like, such as uh, hyperlinks available to you, so maybe have a web browser open as well. And also Photoshop is an integral part of producing this media. Now, on the one hand, you can take and a pre-existing InDesign file and create a very simple and flat PDF version, if you like, for use on a tablet or iPad. Now, this is as simple as saying, let's have a new project in the AV Project Manager. And if we'll call this a simple PDF import, and the project type that you're going to use here is going to be AVE PDF. This is the simplest form of working with the Aquafadas plugin. Now, in the devices area, you can see that you have a um, menu of available types of screen resolutions that you're going to work with. And for the use of, of this uh, demonstration, we're going to be leaving it with the iPad version. So you can press OK here, and then you can see that we have the import InDesign file option available to us. And if we just navigate our way to a eight page InDesign file that we have available to us for doing this, you'll see that on our screen here, we have a quite a simplistic article. Now, it is exactly how this has appeared when it went in a magazine. And that's the beauty of the Aquafadas plugin. You can take what you've already done for print purposes and take it straight in to an iPad or tablet version. Now, you don't actually have to do anything at all to change the article or the setup or the fonts or the graphics and such like to take this straight into an app version in its flat simplest form. You simply generate the project by pressing the button there and then you can send it direct to your test environment. Now if we just flip over to our simulator environment here and we click on this one that we have, you can see now that we have the article sitting there in a simple form that you can read. Now you have the basic functionality of being able to zoom in and out and obviously it responds to the orientation changes which you have available to you and also you have available to you different settings for how you want the actual page to view. So this is a very very simple movement from a pre-existing print layout straight through to something that you can put on newsstand or you can put within an app environment on a tablet or indeed put on a web reader or an e-reader. Now, we haven't actually had to do anything. All we had to do was import a pre-existing InDesign file and we were able to achieve that. But the beauty of being able to produce a, an article, as it were, on an iPad or a tablet is that you can do more than that. You can enrich the experience for the reader. Um, it takes us to a whole different way of thinking than that that we were working with in print in a 2D environment. And so the next stage of your progression is to be able to say, well, let's leave that alone and 
we'll make a better version. So once again, let's have a new um, project and let's call this enriched article. And again, it's an AVE PDF that we want. Um, and we'll open that up. And again, it's a simple import of your InDesign document. But once you have that open, and you'll see that uh, that just runs through and you have the pages listed down there. Now, each of those pages has a new identifier. You may have given them certain numbers uh, in your magazine, but you can see now they're listed one to eight in the project structure. But that's so that we can navigate around um, the feature and add specific functionality to the pages. Now, any frame that you have in InDesign is available for enrichment. And that is by clicking on the AVE Interactivity tab. Now this gives us all these different buttons which allow you to create extra functionality in the reader environment. And so for instance here, we've clicked on an, uh, an image on the page. You don't have to change the content of that frame in InDesign. You simply go over to the slideshow button in the interactivity pane and we say, well, let's have a simple slideshow, create the slideshow there. And then in the contents tab up here at the bottom, you've got files. So now we can simply go over to a set of images for that camera, as it turns out to be. We open those and they get imported. Now you can see those now down the side. And all we're going to do is activate the slideshow functionality for that set of images. Now we can have various settings available to us and different timings that you'd be able to play with. You can also do things like enable that slideshow to go into full screen um, if the user decided to do that and for the user to be able to control the slideshow. But here for us, we just want it to run itself and we don't really want the user to be interacting with it. So we'll leave those settings as they are. And creating that slideshow is as easy as we've just done. Just a few clicks and that slideshow will happen. Now, another element that you very likely wanted to, would want to do um, with an e-experience of an article is to create hyperlinks to, text you, to take you in and out um, of web pages which are associated to the content of the feature. And so this is one area where we actually highlight a piece of text and we use the inbuilt functionality of InDesign in the interactive panel, hyperlinks there, and we just simply set that bit of text to go to a web page. So what we can do is click on our pre-existing URL, which I just happened to gather earlier, copy that in, and what that's going to do is we just type that into the web page link there, and you can see that we've made that into a hyperlink. In other words, the Aquafadas plugin supports the interactive um, functions of InDesign itself, which is very handy. Now, one of the other things that you're very likely to do is to want to support the reader in their navigation through the feature. And so it's common in magazines to have navigation arrows and such like. So if I click on this arrow down the bottom here, um, what we want to do is go make an interactive element from that simple text box. And so we hit the button icon in the interactive pane and we say, let's create a reader action out of that. So we tell the reader here to execute a go to page. Well, no, we actually want to go to the next page because that's how that works. So we'll say go to page and then you see under the index, you can select next rather than an individual number. Another way of doing this would be to make the arrow actually move to a specific page if you wanted jumps or if you wanted to go to particular box outs and so on. So again, that kind of thing is really easy. Now, on the slightly more advanced note, 
It may be, depending on the kind of content that you have in, in the article or in the magazine or book, it might be that you want to actually create a path for the reader to move around the article in a particular way. And this is a function that is sometimes called guided reading or smart reading, where we actually set a path that the reader on the tablet, iPad and so on, will actually follow in a designated way. And so how we do this is we simply click on a frame and again in the interactive pane we say what we'd like to use is smart and that's what the button's called just so that you know the smart button and you can see that now we have a line here with this beginning of that text. Now what we want to do is actually create a path that actually follows the way that the text frames are linked together anyway. So if you're used to using um, text links from one box to another all the way through an article, this will come very, very naturally. So simply we add another item and we press the select button and then we select the next box that it's going to go to. We move across and if we want to then make the reader go up to the top right, we have another item and we press the select button and we choose that one and so on and so forth, you would move through the article. Now it could be that you want the reader then to look at a picture with a caption and so on, and so you'd select this one. If, but uh, you know, there's multiple ways that you would want to do it. But it's simply a matter of adding another item to the chain of the path that you want the reader to follow, pressing that select button and selecting an item. Now that can be any frame, any text frame, a box out, and so on and so forth. Now you would work through the article deciding how you want um, the path of the reader to go and it doesn't have to be just text only, it can be any frame within the piece. Um, a further idea that you can start to think about when you're working in a, an e-environment is dragging the reader's attention to a certain place. Now again you can think a little bit outside of the box perhaps. And so here we're going to just pull in a new picture box here. And we're not going to actually place anything as you would normally for print, but we're going to say this box we would like to use the slideshow functionality in a slightly different way. Again, it's just a simple slideshow that we're going to create, but here we're going to add a different kind of content. And the files here that we're going to be using are just little red boxes that we're going to animate. And so we've selected, and if you look in the little preview there, you'll be able to see that they are just the same red box but in a different position. If you're used to making little GIFs and such like in Photoshop for doing animations, then again this will come very naturally. But the kind of thinking that we can um, actually just select those simple bits of graphic and again, if we just sort out the size of our box, looking at the preview that you see um, against the slideshow area here, with that kind of width, then we'll see all of them in there. And we're just going to create a slideshow of those different positions, and we're going to enable that animation, and again, have them fading. And what that's going to do is create a motion of those red boxes going down on a loop, and and that will be a little attention grabber for the reader to go and look at that box out. So moving on from that, what I'm going to do now is go back out to our iOS simulator and have a look at how that version actually appears. And you can see that you've got a slideshow of the camera sitting there. If I now actually just tap to zoom in, you can see that I've got across the bottom of the screen this guided reading area and with the right arrow I can literally navigate around the path of the article reading in a particular order. That doesn't just um, work off one spread. If we carry on you can see that it's moved to the next spread and so on and so forth. We can adjust the zoom of that. We can start over if we like, going back to the start. And we can go forwards and backwards and so on and so forth, all the way through to the very 
end of the article. If we don't like being in that environment, we can simply exit it. So that is how guided reading works. Similarly, the articles can still be just dragged. And you can see one of the things that I made in this version is a little go-to box. And remember when we did the navigation part, you can set particular page numbers that you want to go to. And so we're saying here the reader might want to go and jump to see the essentials, right there. And so we're creating a much more in-depth experience for a reader out of an InDesign document that was created for print and we haven't had to do very much work ourselves at all. So moving out of there, let's just zoom back out and I'm going to go back to our test environment. You can see that these two variants of the same PDF, that was our flat straightforward one which we actually didn't have to do any work with the Aquafadas uh, plugin really. It was just a couple of clicks, import your document and you can have it ready for your tablet straight away. And then our enriched version, which gave us a lot more functionality and if you like, a lot more excitement for the reader without us really having to do any coding, have any particular worries about um, how we're gonna create certain bits of experience and you know, having Nice things like here, we got a uh, HTML link which takes us straight through to the product website. So that's how you can work straight off an InDesign document without really having to build anything in terms of an app. But Aquafadas also gives you the capability to build specific bespoke apps um, right from scratch and also bring in pre-existing templates or pre-existing InDesign documents into that process as well. So that's what we're going to have a look at next.